Hey, B, do you still have your matter daddy that from back in the days? Which, what? The whole, like the whole matter daddy. Do you still have that? Matter daddy? Yeah. Matter daddy? Yeah. Y'all are looking at me it's crazy. Right? Years. Yeah, I can look that up. Matter daddy? What is a matter daddy? Nothing. What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's a matter. <laughs> <laughs> Big Boy's Big Neighborhood. Boy. Beautiful day in the neighborhood, ladies and gentlemen. He is back in the neighborhood. Okay. It's got all legendary up mm-hmm. in here. Be real. Welcome back to the neighborhood, man. Well, thank you for having me man, back, sir. It is our pleasure, bro. We, uh, Jose and I, we rode to work this morning, bro. I got a playlist that, like, when, when it comes to Cypress, bro, you know, I'm a fan first. You know what I'm saying? Right. I was a fan before I even got into radio. So I still listen to you guys. Like, even right now, we're out there talking, right? And and not to sound crazy, I was like, and I'm pretty sure you had the same feeling. I was, because I could tell. Yeah. I was like, that's B real. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, as long as I've known you, and as many times as we sat down, and as many times I've seen you in the show, do shows, I'm still like, damn, that's B-Real right there. <laughs> and we were coming to work, and I was like, man, B-Real is an amazing lyricist. Thank you. And then we started breaking down just early production, too. Like, even, like, the first album, man, that first album, that just sounds like y'all were already so professional. It, you know, I think it's because we had so much time to work on it. You know, that first album was probably crafted like in a, in the time span of five years. Mm. You know, we 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 came up with a set of demos, then those got stolen from uh, Muggs's. You know, Muggs went to New York and he had a bag of all the discs, the floppy discs. Yeah, that he man, was we had to from. carry like hard copies. Yeah, and someone stole that, so we had to start all over at the airport. He gets there, he sets the bag down to give. One of the homies a pound and a, you know, quick hug and someone scampered got the off. Bag, got damn. the bag, damn. Yeah. So you know, we had to start over. And at that point in starting over, I think Muggs had a better idea. You know. Did think- you ever think back then how do we make this magic again? Because even then, that sounds magical. That sounds like, you know, and y'all never lost it. But that sounds hungry. You know, I think I think what what Muggs was able to do with that in like having the the great memory that he does and like you know the ability to push it into a different place right i think that just made him a little bit more it gave him a little bit more fire and for for sen and i we were just like all right well you know if we got to do it again we got to do it again but this time we had a better understanding you know because we had already done that set and they were cool but it wasn't necessarily what turned out to be the first the first album Mm. You know what I mean? So um, I think it was a blessing that they stole that bag and made us start over because who knows if it would have like had the impact the same way because the songs were slightly different. They really? Were, what was on there, though? There was uh, a couple of joints that uh, I think there was one called the L.A. Strongest, and it's a cool demo song, but right. like an album song, it wouldn't have been but it. But was My it voice- songs that ended up coming to the album? No. Oh, really? Though? I think there was only maybe two songs from that from that first uh from those that first run that and actually got reproduced. You was about to say something and something you was about to say something with your voice. Yeah, okay. So like songs like the LA Strong, there was one called Getting Funky and one called LA Strongest. And they were dope. Like Sen and I had a, a cool little style to it. Send Dog sounded amazing on it. I sounded like my voice was trash. Like I was rapping like the way you hear me talk right now so it was like a deeper version but it wasn't cutting through any of the tracks the style was there the lyrics was there but it was not cutting and mugs was very real to me about it you know because we're brothers you know what i mean and and we put our egos aside when we work and i've told you this a couple times where he was like yeah yo you got to do something about that voice or we're gonna have to have you just writing for send dog Damn. I was like, okay. Then that's early on. You're like, all right, yeah. tell me how you really feel, Muggs. So, so mellow. Because you know Muggs usually holds his tongue. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. he's notoriously known for that. You oh, know? yeah. Hey, man, so getting into the voice, and we've had a chance to talk about this before, man, where, of course, your, your rapping voice and your speaking voice, there's a difference. Definitely. And at one point, you did rap in this tone that we're hearing right now. Right. As you just explained. Yeah. Tell us the story again, how you went from this voice to what we hear from as B-Real, the artist. So, you know, all of us, 
on the Cypress block. Because you can still hear you. Yeah. Yeah, you know See, what I'm there, saying? There's little, little tones here and there. But uh, us from the Cypress block, we were always fans of big East Coast hip-hop and all that stuff from the early days, you know? And there was this artist named Ramel Z mm -hmm. who used to rap like this here. But in the middle of his rap, he'd go way up here. You know what I mean? And... Mello and I were big fans of that. So, like, sometimes we'd just be messing around. You know how you do when you're listening to a Run DMC song. You're yeah. rapping along like you're that. Like, even when like we hear Cypress, we go, oh, I could just kill him. Yeah. You know, we do sin. We right. do you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Same thing, right? So, we're doing Ram LZ, and, and uh, Mello and I were messing with it a lot. So, like, he 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 wrote the original version of Real Estate on the first album, oh Mello. Oh, God, bro. So, when we did this, we're like, kicking that style, kicking the verse. And he's like, why don't you do it in the Ramel style? So I try it and it sounded crazy. I didn't think they were going to like it, but I was like, well, if, if this is me staying in the group as a vocalist, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to try it. And fortunately, Muggs loved it. He was like, okay, let's do this again. And then we're going to try that on this song and this song and this song, which was, I think, Hand on the Pump. Oh and then God. eventually Kill a Man. And those were like the first three songs with the voice. And so uh, early on, Hand on the Pump, Killer Man, like that's those are the first like original real songs. Est real estate real was estate. the first. Now yeah. with real estate, and you say um Mello wrote. He he uh, Mel Mello wrote because we would trade off. Like right. I wrote two songs on Mello's um I think uh Escape from Havana. Mm -hmm. I, I wrote two songs. It, it's either on the first or second album. Where I I wrote uh, Babalu Bad Boy Damn. I think and uh, ri no River Cubanos and and one other one um, or Tacapella it was Tacapella and River Cubanos that went on his uh, his uh, one of his albums so in trade he writes me real estate in real estate the the version he wrote goes on the album the but I wrote a different. Got it. But I wrote a different version for the single. I didn't know real estate was going to become. So none of us knew real estate would be one of the singles. We had like six singles off that first. Who album. wrote the "You Ain't Flamboyant"? Part? He did. Ooh. <laughs> he wrote. That. He wrote that whole verse. Yeah, he wrote that. And so, like, what Can I you did. You kick that just the lyrics what, for me on that one, if I could remember it, because because uh -oh. I'm, I'm used to doing the video version, the video, the single. The single that we yeah. put out, we put Send Dog on the single. We we rewrote the song so that Send Dog had a verse on it because on the the album, he he's not on it. So mm. if it was going to be a single, we wanted Send Dog on it. So I rewrote my first verse t for it to make sense in the style that that I was running, and uh, then I I I uh, wrote Send Dog's second verse for that. And then the rest of the song. So I just did a rewrite. Same style, same cadence. But I just sort of recrafted it for me that, that I wanted to be comfortable kicking it. And then we were doing a, a, a single with it. So uh, how's it go? Because um, it's a lot in there, bro. Yeah, it's a lot. And it's a song we do a lot. So I'm like. Right. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? Yo, it's time to hurt us, sort of like murder. Any punk coming on the hill out of order, I ain't a hater. But if you're a spectator seeking to find the toys with no flea flavor see i'm talking about those with vocals ain't coming off with the, with skill to kill at will but awfully dumb of course some didn't know the power of the last flow i slow up flow up blow up those way those hey, way man, pros what can you with go my from flamboyant <laughs> do you remember that you ain't yeah yeah that part okay so the reason i like i stutter on that version because that's his version it, on on our single version, it's a different version. It's so, uh, and I'll get to that part. It goes, uh, yo, it's time to hurt us, sort of like murder. Any punk coming on the hill out of order, I ain't a hater. But if you're an instigator, I'll break your ass off with the help from the beta. Talk about those with vocals ain't coming off. With skill to kill at will, but awfully tough. Of course, some don't know the power of the afro. I slow up, fraud, blow up. Those who ain't pros up with my stupid radio cut. And then oh my God. it goes into 
the rest, and then it goes uh, into the second verse. You ain't flamboyant, a toy boy on it. Ain't paid apply for under b boyment, but there's no help wanted punk, so keep looking. Ain't surprised you got your girl hooking, doing that doulo, but you still can't do no damage, homes, cause you really can't manage to handle a gang of niggas running like Randall. Funeral arrangements, whole lot of scandal, hectic, dialectic, funk Buddha, vocalectic, accurate shooter, duck down, homes hit the ground. That's what you get when you fuck with the brown dog. Send is coming to the mound. Latino from Cyprus rips the compound. Hey man. Man, real estate. We were this morning, bro. We were rolling in. And I was like, man, listen to this. Listen yeah. to this, man. We, you know, and that was obviously inspired by Mello because Mello was, you know, a lot of people don't give him props like right, they man. should, but his writing ability and ability to come up with a different orthodox style. And so that that was like uh that was like the first Cypress Hill song that would that actually Muggs felt was like, yo. This is this is a song. We need to build off this, and so yeah, real estate. Salute to Mello. Hey man, and hand on the pump. And when you say that was a song that you just started to voice with, how I could just kill a man? Like I say, man, those sound like dudes that were just professional. I remember the first time I, I met someone from Cyprus, and it was. I remember I was in the studio with Booyah Tribe. Yeah. And Booyah Tribe introduced y'all to me as Cypress Hill Tribe. Yeah, first, yeah. Yeah, man. And he was like, oh, yeah, you know, you know, real. Cypress yeah. Hill Tribe. Yeah, yeah. And so were you at, for was that a split second? Was it something that y'all were known as, or was it more when you was with Booyah? No, nah, it was something that we, we had tended to call ourselves, you know what I mean? Like the, when we were making our first uh, promo hats and stuff like that, we had Cypress Hill Tribe on it and the whole deal. But, like, you know, we had Booyah Tribe, Tribe Called Quest. We felt right. like we didn't want, you know, to we Be felt there was tribe. yeah too many tribes right? so yeah. like, let's just go with Cypress Hill and you know we we took the tribe off of there but uh, you know with Booyah we were always brothers like that so yeah, you man. know they always looked at us like the Cypress Hill tribe was there another yeah. name before y'all fell on Cypress Hill well it was DVX right yeah you know before we even before we were even doing our demos we were just you know showing up at backyard parties and getting on the mic we and were, who was that at the time that was uh, Mellow Man. Damn. Send Dog, uh, T Funk from the Funk Dubious, Damn. and myself. And sometimes there was th there was this other female rapper that that uh, we grew up with. Her name was Mademoiselle Freak. That was her name. <laughs> her name was what? Mademoiselle Freak. Yeah, right. <laughs> we, Appropriate for the name. We uh, especially because it was like in the late eighties yeah. with this type of thing when it was you know we were just fans of it and like you know trying to do what you know, these other dudes were doing, you Amen. know, and she could wrap her ass off though. Like I, you know, I'll, t I'll tell you that, like, I don't know if she was ever going to get anywhere with it, but like out of all of us, she was pretty goddamn polished. Hey man, was the Cypress Hill album, Cypress Hill, was that really 1991 or am I tripping? Yeah. The self-titled that's uh that's 91. We released it in 91. Again, it was like a five year, you know, time span of working to get to that album to 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 get what we thought was going to be the presentation like what so Mugs is like. that before chronic yeah and that's before what's my name yeah that's crazy i remember with paul stewart man shout out to paul stewart as well i remember power move promotions man i remember just when i first and, and i told you the story before when i first got like funky feel one and Funky Feel one was the A side, and and we would I had a hip hop line called What Up, so we would do like gifting and you know packaging yeah. and giving stuff away, man. And I remember when I took Funky Feel one, I thought Funky Feel one was amazing. Thank when you. I flipped that over and I heard how I could just kill a man, I was like, what the fuck are these dudes on? <laughs> that was the one that 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 propelled us to. Oh yeah, man. Because as cool as Funky was, uh, Funky Feel one. Cause it, I like that song too. Mugs did an incredible job of the production. Mm -hmm. That was our first single because Sony. Well, it was a double A side, as you know. It, but they they chose that as a a one. Let's just right, call right, it a you. one, right? And uh, they thought, well, because we can't put out a single of these guys talking about killing people, let's put out this funky feel one joint, and maybe that goes right. And it was slow. 
you know, as cool as that song was, and, and as much as we might love it now in comparison to back then, it was slow going for us. It wasn't until, like, the mixed DJs in New York can't remember who was the first, but they flipped it, and they start yeah, rocking it, and then it starts trickling down to other mix shows, and then eventually down here, and that's when it started to go, because I think just the style of the production of that song and then our voices mm. bouncing off of each other in in the way that it was the I think it had an impact like the way when 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 we first started hearing public enemy it was just something so different than all the other stuff we're like oh damn yeah, and man. I think that that effect we had. That's like what that I was telling song. Jose this morning, man. It was like Bomb Squad. I was like, man, the way that you heard Keith and Hank and, yeah. and you know what I'm saying? Like Absolutely. the way sounds were coming in and out and it was yeah. noises. I was like, man, that's what I said. So, it sounds so polished from the beginning. Yeah, we're most... celebrating 50 years of hip hop. Yes. And it's crazy, man, that professionally y'all have been involved with hip hop for over, over half of it. it its existence. Yeah, we got two anniversaries popping off for two, for the for two of the kids, right? Uh Black Sunday. Right. Which is uh is what? 30, 30 years old this year. And Damn. uh and uh Cypress Hill 4, which is the sleeper album, my favorite out of all of them. Well, when people ask me, Cypress Hill 4 is always my favorite. That one's 25 years this year as well. So, you know, Hitting the milestones because I mean, you know, as artists, when we growing up doing this, I mean, because we're growing up to this, right? <laughs> yeah. Then eventually, this is something we do, you know, as a young artist, you don't expect like thinking down the line, oh, my, I'm gonna be around 25 years, yeah, man. You're 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 lucky if you get to be around three or four years, especially, right. especially back then, because the game will chew you up and spit you right out, yeah, man. Because if you, if you ain't built for it, no matter how talented you are. You know, just like gum, going to chew you up and spit yeah, you out. Yeah, once the flavor's gone. New piece. Yeah. Hey, hey, <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, and it's crazy because you didn't have the power of social media back then. Yeah, and no. You had to show up. Right. You had to show up. You had to show out. Every show you had to make sure you had the same energy. Every time now, you know, e even with recording, you couldn't always say, hey, move that over there. Yeah, no. And just punch me in right here and move <laughs> that over here. And double. You know, it was like... I used to love to hear the tape, the two-inch yeah, tape. Yeah, the two-inch tape, yeah. And when it stopped, like, those, those are a moment. Now they got it on where you can hear it on, like, I think something yeah. digital. But, yeah, it was it was a different kind of work ethic, too. Do oh, yeah. you remember the first time you heard Cypress Hill on the radio? Yeah, we were bugging out. It's like every movie you see, you know, like the five right. heartbeats, yeah. you know, how they're, they're, like, tripping out. <laughs> you know, we start getting calls, hey, we just heard you in the mix, or we just heard this and that, and, like, well, damn, I ain't heard it. Yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, why I keep missing it? Yeah, how come yeah. I keep missing it? But I remember. And that's when you would sometimes get home and it'd be a message at 8 o'clock. Like, man, they playing you. Like, oh, they played that at 1130. Yeah. 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 And, you know, so I I missed it for, for a minute until I didn't, <laughs> you know. And then, you know, it, it felt crazy because it's like, you know, you do all this work and you don't know if it's going to go or not. Right. And no matter how much work you put into it, you just don't know. It's a gamble, you know what I mean? And you know, here in here in uh, in uh, Killer Man in the mixes, that was a big deal for us because we were big mix show kids. I mean, right. we grew up off the mix shows here, starting with the K Day, yeah. a mix master show. Salute to Tony G and Julio and all the all the guys, M Walk and and the rest, Jam and Gemini, oh, yeah, and, man. you know, Joe Cooley and all those guys. We grew up to that. And and so, you know, when 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 the Baker boys come over here and, or go to power and they they do the, the Friday Night Flavors, another mix show, and we're like living with this, right? So we come from that mix show culture. So to hear Kill a Man on, in the mix for yeah, the man. first time, we're like, you know, we didn't really – care too much about what funky phil one was doing We're like yo killer man's in the mix hey man and then that was like you guys like y'all never even from from rap superstars to rock superstars no one ever looked at cypress hill like man what are they doing that's goofy like even y'all hollywood star y'all got that at cypress hill right you know what i'm saying yeah. like like y'all didn't go out and start doing things we we're like man what the hell is going on with them guys I'll when you, it was easy to do that i'll tell you what you know like we took some chances and stuff like that that we knew that hip-hop purists wouldn't get down with right and we were purists ourselves so like we're taking big chances doing 
these other things like you know like getting down with with the with the heavy style of of you know hybrid of hip hop and metal or or right. rock or whatever it is alternative um you know but our fans were always so open minded i think they were as open minded as we were about music you know whatever we were going to try out as long as it didn't sound whack as right long right as right in some way it was dope even though it was maybe slightly different because that happens some you know like some things will go over the head of your fans or just people in general like yeah that's cool but whatever and you know they're on to the next bit right but our our fans have accepted all the the evolution and some of the chances we took now you know you don't win on every right. everything you do and as an artist that hurts. Right. <laughs> yeah. you know I mean? right. But blood, sweat, and tears for real. But this builds character, big. Right. You know what I'm saying? This this helps. This gives you fuel to like, okay, I took an L over here. I, you know, we're gonna like bounce back and we're gonna learn from our mistakes over here. And I mean, I, I think that's that that's why we've we we're still around doing what we do because we've been able to like figure out what works for us and avoid the things that don't mm -hmm. and to know and have have uh, faith in our fan base that they're going to get what we put down even if it's something different as long as it's dope if we feel it's dope we're going to put it out there if we, if we don't have confidence in it it doesn't go and that's just the way we've always been you know when did you know that cypress hill so-called made it <sighs> because i'm pretty sure it's small things when you say man the mix show I remember seeing you guys at the Roxy. Yeah. And it was just people that was die hard, like those of us that just knew. And I remember y'all came out and y'all did a show like y'all had been performing and doing clubs or shows yeah. and venues for years. Like you y'all hit y'all vocals, you know, Sin was on top of his shit, mugs. It was like a whole the first time I saw y'all was an introduction to what people still see today. Right. And that was a live band a live group really putting on a real live show yeah do you remember what that night felt like yeah you know um it took a minute for us to get to that point you know because we, <laughs> we didn't know what we were doing we rehearsed a lot but we didn't really have a direction you know right the, the only things that we had to sort of feed off to give us an indication on how this is done is you know mugs had shows with 783, 783. so he had a little yeah. bit of experience um, Send Dog had been doing hype man work for his brother Mello for some years, so they had a little bit of experience. I didn't have any, right? Right, and uh, so we'd go to to these other shows like Public Enemy shows, uh, Leaders of New School, De La, Digital right. Underground, and I'm soaking up all this stuff. And Mugs took me to these places so that I could soak it up and say, "This is how we got to do it. It's got to be on this level." Or we ain't doing it and so you know it took it took me to see some of those things and then the trial and error of the first three to four years of Damn. going off of energy and not necessarily being polished yet and then i think by our third or fourth year we started really snapping in on like okay when i saw y'all at the roxy what year was that like how many years in was that <sighs> i'm not sure oh, okay but, but but by that, that time, we had an, enough shows under our belt. Really? Yeah, by that time, we had enough shows because, I mean, you know, we man, were Man, I changed my whole hip-hop history. I thought <laughs> I was early, early. I was, man. Well, I mean, it's considerably early, you know, because we've been around 30 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. years. But, you know, yeah, That's you know, it, it, it took a lot of, like, I remember, like, some of our first shows were, you know, with Naughty by Nature. We, we sort of were, like, trying to figure out how you build this set list to get these people on this roller right. coaster ride, you know what I mean? And it was it was tough going that first that first run because like the naughty heads, they were like all about naughty. They didn't even, they, they did not care to see us. Right. You know what I mean? And then y'all so, come out, they're like, who the F is this? And then and then when Killer Man flipped, and then it was in the middle of this tour, you know what I mean? When oh, Killer wow. Man flipped, um, then we start seeing, you know, the rah rah yeah. type of you know, reaction. Hey, stuff man, like that. I remember being on the road with Farside when passing me by Flip. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? And I remember we were somewhere, man, and Trey was doing his verse. I'm shooting for her heart, got my finger on the trigger. She could be my broad. And he put his mic out. 
and the whole crowd said, and I could be, you know. Yeah, yeah. And we were like, I remember me, Suave, everybody, we looked at each other like, oh, shit. Yeah. Because we were on buses. Right. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't yeah. like satellite radio. If you didn't pick up anything, all you, so you don't see the success. Yeah. And then when you go to a radio station, of course, they're going, oh, man, we love your song. You know what I'm saying? But you're not li- sitting there seeing if they're playing you 50, 100 times a week. You just move on. But right. the crowd. Let them know. That's the indicator, yeah. Yeah. Like when they're singing, you know, your joint, and you, and you don't, you're not prepared for this. And you do that, and they're like bringing it back. You're like, oh, damn. <laughs> yeah. right. Miss your next words. Like, Mugs, you yeah. see this? I mean, that's, that's, that's some of the stuff that we were encountering, like going to Europe for the first time on our second album. Because on the first run, you know, we didn't go to Europe. We were doing all these shows here in the States, like trying to build our name and like, build a name for us as a, a live act you know mm-hmm. what i mean and uh, so we avoided europe that whole first two years or whatever and uh, when we get out there for black sunday that was the indicator Different. we we get out there and they know the songs and they're singing them back to us and we're yeah. tripping because this is a brand new album you know it re- it released there it, it was ob- obviously releasing in the states around the same time and we're like when we're calling home, we're like, hey, man, um, or they're telling us, some of our homies, hey, man, there's lines around the block. We can't even get into a record store to buy the album to support. I mean, and they're saying it's all for your album. And we're like, what? Yeah, man. It, it's something we didn't get to see. So these days, it's it's the gift and the curse with, with, with all the platforms and the social media right. and all that stuff because one of two things happens. You see it win, and you're like, oh, hell yeah, I'm winning. Like, look, we doing numbers. This thing's going. And sometimes <laughs> you see the failure. It's right. It's like, oh, man, this ain't going. Right. Damn. And, and, but sometimes the, win, the, the so-called wins are deceiving, though, because, you know, with, these days you see some of these artists with a billion streams, and a lot of that is bots. Mm. You know what I mean? And they're not actual people. Yeah, and man. And they don't get that part of the game. You and know? you just said it like when you say your homies would be in line. That there was a difference between somebody going out copping a hard copy. A hard you copy. You know, and yeah. and you don't see in stores anymore no. and lines wrapped around the block and yeah. people coming with your album to sign it. You know, it, it and it's a different space now. And as we're celebrating 50 years of hip hop, these are the things, man, that I don't want people to forget like yeah. how how true that was those things connected the artist to the fan base when you went and did those in stores and did the hard copies and and signed those actual hard copies the, you know in in this time the digital age has has sort of swept that out because yeah. how many record stores can you go to go do an in-store at aside amoeba right you know what right. i'm saying so that they sort of pushed that that to the side, and I, I don't think they were realized they were doing that, but it's just something that that it evolved into. But <laughs> some of us still do meet and greets, but it's not like an in store. Right, right. It's at a I show mean, or something now. Yeah, and- you know, it, unless you decide to press hard copies to have available at that meet and greet. Like, so if you know you're gonna, you know, um, do like a hundred signatures or or a hundred people are coming in, you know, to have a hard copy right. present for them. Some artists still do that. Yeah, now they're collector's items and you know it. Yeah. As opposed to buying it and it became a collector's item. Yeah, they item. don't even got a CD player to play. <laughs> yeah, hey man, I remember, I can't tell you how many times, I remember one time, man, I went to go get my car washed, right? And they stole my Cypress Hill CD oh. out, of, <laughs> yeah. out the car. Bro. <laughs> You talking about doubling back on some ignorant shit? <laughs> Man, I doubled back. And, and it's crazy as we talk about how long the staying power has been. I know, be real, that you've seen people that you'll go to a particular country or a state or whatever, yeah. and you've seen people that was like, oh, man, I have a kid. Yeah. And, and now the kid, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you've seen people at multiple shows that you've probably grown up with. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. So there was a uh, okay. So when we were doing smoking grooves, right? We mm-hmm. did this particular this particular smoking grooves with Public Enemy and uh, I think Erica Badu. And it was that lineup, and uh, we did all three smoking grooves. People thought that it was our tour, but we were just like anchoring the sh- the, the show, right? Like they would get others to to be the headliners, but we were always the co-headliner in the spot. 
No other group did all three years. We were the only ones. And so... Was Smoking Grooves y'all? Well, people thought it was. Yeah, hell yeah, I But did. it was, I think, Paul Tillette. Okay, I, I right? for sure thought it. Um, So we, you know, we got onto this thing where, like, we're going to be very interactive with our fans. So we asked for a for a an autograph signing space where we can have a booth there. We'll have all our promo stuff. It's not going to have any merch. We're not going to sell anything from it. We're just going to be available to the fans. So we'd have lines of like two, 300, 400 people. Well, these festivals are running. Just come right before our set. We'd be, you know, doing this thing. And, uh, you know, <laughs> Chuck D was on this and he was one of like my idol, right? Like, pfft. Like, yo, Chuck, we got this autograph signed booth. Come get down with us over here. And uh, he decided, yeah, you know, because he's a people person and mm -hmm. he likes to see what people are doing as well, like what other artists are doing, how they're engaging their fans and whatnot. And uh, so he came in there, saw that, signed autographs with us. And, uh, you know, there was this one girl, to come to your point, right, that she was pregnant. Her and her man came and her man knew that I was a priest in Ifa, right? Um, a what? A priest in the Yoruba religion really of though? Ifa. Yes. Don't and, say that like, like, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. and just move on, bro. Well, I thought you knew. <laughs> Man. Uh, but so she, they asked me to pray on, on her belly, you know? And so I prayed on her belly and Chuck was tripping. He was like, I've never seen this in hip hop. And truthfully, I, you know, I've, I had done like three or four of these, but you know, it happened in front of Chuck. And so <laughs> he remembered this throughout his time. He was like telling this story to other folks. Hey, man, <laughs> I tell you, I was with Be Real and this couple came and, and, uh, cause he was there. He saw it. And so we're doing Prophets of Rage all these years later. And we go through that same town in Texas and we're about to do the show. But a few hours before the show, I get a DM from that, from that lady. Wow. Just like, hey, I don't know if you remember this, but years, you know, at Smoke Grooves, my, me and my husband came and asked you to pray on my belly. Well, I'm here with my husband. We're still married, and we brought our 18-year-old son, who you wow. or, or, or however old he was, <laughs> we brought our son that you prayed over to the show. I showed Chuck this, and he was blown away by it. And, <laughs> and uh, yeah, you know, that's... <laughs> hey man, but that's the relationships that people build throughout the years, bro. You know, you you can't buy that. Yeah, yeah. You you can't buy that, and I think that's the reason why. Also, you know, you guys continue to eat off of hip hop because y'all did hip hop and rock so well, and y'all gave it to everybody. You know, and it's not one of the things now where it's like, oh, okay, you know, nobody is really living off of so called royalties. Yeah. You know, they ain't no record sales that mm. just keep you in the game. So it's about staying on that road. And the one thing with you, uh, Snoop, Q, Wu-Tang, you know, when whenever, you know, Fuji's come around or White Clef, there's just a, a red man, method yeah. man. There's just some people that you know I've seen multiple times and I know that I'm going to get a great show. Right. All the time. We don't go through the motions, man. Nah, nah, man. We're very competitive in the sense that, you know, if we're if we're playing the co-headline spot, you got to come on after us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're going to make it hard for anyone. Right. Even if we love you, we're going to make it hard because that's... <laughs> that's I remember that's talking with Q one time. He said, I don't mind going on. You know, it's about the person that's going on after him right. that's going to have... I, I remember yeah. one time, and I won't say the artist or the group name, but they pushed their, we got a headline, we got a headline, we got a mm, headline. Yeah. And it came back to me and it came back to others. And sure enough, man, when the co-headliner got off, the headliner couldn't live up to it, no. bro. Yeah, you got to have and that show. <laughs> they that, just start yeah. walking off. Yeah, for us, we look at it two ways, right? If you got us in the, the, the headline spot, you know, we're we're looking at what everybody else is doing, and we're like, okay, mm -hmm. we're gonna we're gonna bring it. This we're the we're the hammer to the nail, right? Right? right. <laughs> you know what I mean? And when we're in the co-headline spot, we're gonna make it hard for whoever's coming after. Yeah, man. You know, now it's it's not in the attempt to make them look bad; it's to elevate them, to make 
you know, to right. make them come and bring a show. Now, it's right. up to them to do that. Just like it's up to us that if somebody that we brought on and they're co-headlining and they kill it, like let's right. just say a Red and Meth, right? Because we've done shows with them where they play before us and it's like, you got to follow this, right? Yeah, man. But we're confident that we can follow almost anyone and deliver what we do and, and get that reaction. Now, oh, I've seen it. Now, I could say that's 95% of the time because there's some nights you're not going to win. Right, you know right. what I mean. That, that crowd just ain't for you. Yeah, man. You know, or maybe the reaction that you expect ain't there. So you may say, "Oh man, we didn't get one. They got it." And you have to take two things into consideration. If it's a festival play, I was right? About to say, and the the doors open at like twelve, and you go on at like eleven. Right. How much energy is yeah, left in people that are crowd? That's what I'm about to say. People can get tired, bro. <laughs> yeah, some summer, a summer festival, most especially. Yeah. Now, yeah, man. So you could chalk that up to where, like, okay, I didn't, we didn't get the reaction, but that's because they've been on their feet all day at this festival, and that's it, right? <laughs> you could use that as an excuse Oh, yeah, sometimes. I would definitely use that. I wouldn't blame it on me. When it's a show that's indoors, and it's specific to Start at like eight, eight <laughs> five yeah. groups. Your co-headline comes and kills it, and you have like that. Okay, let's just hurry up and get get yeah, this yeah. over with type of thing because we ain't getting the reaction. Like they put the half in the back end and yeah. count over it. Okay, let's yeah. Go. If they take the juice out of the room and and you can't bring it back, I mean that's on you. Right. And, and and I don't recall ever having one of those nights that was specific to like us headlining our show, but. Yeah, there's there's been times. I mean, shoot, we were in the co-headline spot um, at this place called Rock and Ring in Germany, and uh, uh, this group, uh, this metal group named Rammstein, who is very popular uh, in in the metal scene. I mean, they are like crazy, and their show is nuts. And Germany is their home, so oh wow. You know, we're like, okay, we're in the perfect slot. We're thinking, you know, we're going to go on right before Romstein. We're going to slam him, and then, you know, it's an alley-oop to Romstein, right? <laughs> Wrong. Oh. <laughs> we go up there, and normally, because Germany's, like, are, are in Europe yeah. is our biggest market. Like, for hip-hop, they love some Cypress Hill, so we assume we're going to go up there. And we didn't do no, you know, like half-ass type show we didn't run through the motions we're like giving our show and they were just okay all right hurry up wow. we need romstein on yeah okay cool yes yeah, yeah. Brazil, but hurry up and get Man, the hell smoking off. okay hey oh. it, it, it was humbling yeah to say the least <laughs> thank you romstein good thank night you, romstein <laughs> next <laughs> yeah. all right. and then when romstein mm -hmm. came on they blew it oh up, man like they had people's having sex on the stage, right? They were painted in gold, and they were completely still when the set started, right? And as the set's going, you see these, what you thought were like stage props start to move. And then they're moving. Wow. And then they're... Getting down. Getting down, because, you know, some of the songs are very sexually or orientated, mm -hmm. I guess, right? And then they got these cannons that look like, Penises are yeah. damn. Yeah. Hey man, that's and, when you go and, and be like, hey man, I need some gold and, people and, fucking on stage. And, yeah. <laughs> and, and they got and they got two two cannons and <laughs> there's there's two two people manning the 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 penis cannons and oh. when they shoot it, <laughs> it's a stream of white oh oh, that man. goes out into oh, the Oh yeah, crowd. see they yeah, they they yeah. were ready. Hey bro. And that's the shit you could bring like, that from the house. It's like how do you stand up to yeah. that? I mean, yeah. like if we were going on after that Oh man! Thank God, no one thought. Hey, Cypress Hill should headline after Rob Steve. Oh we yeah! Oh man, it would have been done. I, we would have probably not. Have you would have been like, man, we don't need no mics. There's only four people right here. <laughs> like, what are yeah. you talking about? Yeah, it, it was. It was. Uh, <laughs> man, it was. It was humbling <laughs> and. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting to say the least. Yeah, thank you, Germany. Thank, <laughs> thank you, you Romstein. Hey, hey, man, we're celebrating fifty years of hip hop. And did you ever have any relationship with Tupac? Yeah, yeah, Tupac was a homie. You know, we met him through the Digital Underground Squad. Okay, because, so it's been it was a minute. Well, yeah, yeah. People don't really didn't know that we were good friends with uh, Money B. We met him yeah, through a man. cat um, that worked at ASCAP for a time, and he was like actually the first dude who believed in our Cypress Hill vision. His, his name was Jerry Davis. Salute to Jerry Davis. 
and I think he passed. Rest in peace. Um, but he hooked us up with those guys. You know, he's like, I know these guys in the Bay. They're called Digital Underground. They're on the bubble right now. They're killing it. You need to link up with these guys. So we meet Money B and Fuse and uh, Shock. Mm-hmm. And we and and eventually we meet Pac because Pac is a part of their stage show at this point, and we start getting on with Pac. And so when we get on, he would show up to our shows in the Bay, and and roll around with us, and he'd break these big ass sacks of some bomb ass Bay weed, and he had a he had a hand cannon with him. You right. know what I mean? It's like, oh y'all are going into East Oakland today. Okay, I'm coming with you. You know, I'm gonna watch your back. And uh, from then on, we, we were friends, and, and uh, we'd run in, into each other at the conventions and stuff like right, that. Right, be hanging man. there. And uh, he was a cool dude, man. And, uh, you know, it wasn't until he got with Death Row till we didn't really have any sort of um, communications with each other yeah. at that point. You know what I mean? Because it was a whole different get down when he went there. But, yeah, he was, he was a wild one, man. Yeah, man. And, and what's crazy is it he would roll places – before he gets with Death Row and he's still wilding out like on his own, before he has that sort of backup, you know, with a a, a, a a stable backup, right? When he was like sort of on the solo run, he'd run around through these conventions by himself, bulletproof vest, no right. bodyguards. He'd, you know, be having a bandana to cover his face and just show up on you. What's up? You know? Right. Like, hey, man. He was, did he was you, a trip. Do you remember just like, private conversations that you had with Pac, because I remember mine, and I knew that they were special at that moment. Not when you fast forward and all Pac was going to get taken away from us, but you could see how intelligent oh, yeah. Pac was yeah, all the time, early on. And you could see the wild side in Pac, too, yeah. even before Death Row. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But but you, I know you had great conversations with yeah, Tupac I mean, as you well. You know, I, I think he liked, um, he liked being with people that were like, on the edge like he was, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? People that could understand that and and that were talking about something different, and you know, because he was very educated, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? He was an intelligent dude and very creative. And I think he was always trying to find a space, you know what I mean? At least from what I could tell as, as his friend in that moment, like trying to find a space with people he could click with. Like that's why he clicked up with uh, um, Tretch, Right, and they because they were really good friends for a long time, and you know, I, I don't think they ever stopped being friends. But I'm saying they used to click up a lot. That's why you see them in videos together and stuff like that. And Tretch constantly shouting Pac out. Um, but he 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 was a cool dude, man. Off the hook, yeah. When you chain. when you did say like when he got with Death Row, the communication wasn't as much, right? When you would look at Pac, you know, the Death Row days, or when things started to get a little crazy. Did you, not that did you ever reach out, but did you think like like damn man like what's going on here? Well, you know, I felt he was hyper focused on mission, and mm-hmm. that was you know because I think he he felt he had a lot to prove to to some you right. know and like that his blow up was inevitable, you know, and uh, I think that when you're super focused like that, you tend not to see everything around you, you know what I mean, and I think that that's sort of what happened you know you sort of focus everything out people you right. used to talk to constantly and it just things things change because you're on this mission and I, I believe he was on that mission so a lot of us that maybe had communication with them before we didn't have the same communication because he wasn't available to it he was right. in that studio knocking it down because he had something to prove and then when he started getting on that run and he started getting that momentum he wasn't going to let it go Mm. At that point, what I, was your relationship with Biggie like? I didn't have one. None at all. No. Did you ever meet or slap hands? Or? Nope. Wow. I seen him once uh, when he was on the bubble when people were talking about him early on with the party in, in uh, Bullish, yeah. and he played at uh, I believe it was the Third Street Promenade. Remember that spot? It was a hip hop spot that would in jump Santa Monica. Up. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, they had, they had a little hip hop club down there. I can't remember what the name of it was. And it was on Third Street, but it wasn't in, like, Santa Monica or West L.A. It wasn't, like, uh, was, Jamaica Jamaica House or anything of that? I don't remember. Okay. But I know it was Third Street Promenade okay, gotcha. area. Yeah. It, and and uh, he was doing a show down there. So me and my homies, we shut the studio down, and uh, we were like, let's go check him out. 
and he got on the mic. And it was a small little stage, but he ripped it. Man, I remember I saw um, him and Pac on stage together in New York, and they went into party and bullshit oh, yeah. out there, bro. <sighs> And, and when he Killing. when he say a fight broke out and they stop and then they start fighting each other and yeah. then when they came can we just all get along yeah. so I could put yeah. hickeys on the neck of little Sean <laughs> man I knew I, I was witnessing history right there bro yeah I was I knew I was wit- witnessing history right there yeah man how did Cypress Hill and be real and, 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 and I didn't see this and I was around at that time too how did y'all float through the so-called East Coast, West Coast beef when y'all had love on every side? Like clouds of smoke, baby. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> um, it was easy for us because, right. I mean, you know, if, being from the West Coast, we weren't necessarily labeled a West Coast group right? because we broke on the East Coast and we had more of an East Coast sound than a West Coast sound up until, I mean, maybe the fourth, al- fifth album or sixth when we start doing a more West Coast sounding type thing. So we never got caught up in that, you know what I mean? Because we had love on the East Coast, and obviously we had love here because we're from here, and we didn't buy into to any of that. Right. You know what I mean? Like for us, we you know, we were built off of East Coast hip-hop, and that's a fact, you know what I mean? All our influences, everything that, that we ever listened to that inspired us to get into this was from out there so there was no way we were gonna get involved in that we didn't have no beef with anybody on the east coast for anything to to even like be a part of perpetuating something like that and we knew that all the media outlets were just feeding into that to make hip-hop look horrible as as you know they've tried to do throughout hip hip hop's history right so we tried to play into none of that we played a lot of east coast gigs and we didn't see any any uh blowback from it i just i think the the people who were specifically having the beef which was you know Pac and big and their camps they saw the residuals of that and anyone who else any, right. anyone else who would speak on it you know that didn't necessarily have to they might have caught something but for the most part there was plenty of east coast groups that came in that time and were doing shows at the house of blues yeah, or the man. whiskey or the roxy or the palladium or at the palace with no one giving them any beefs you know what i mean now had it been you know big or puff or any of those guys coming from the camp maybe it would have been a different story but right. all the other, like method man red man i know busted kept Busta, coming through. you know like um a lot of them dudes kept coming down here. And, yeah, it was and, just a... And it was love, but, you know, to hear it through the media, it was like this crazy-ass war going on. Right. And it wasn't really that. Hey, man, if you had a playlist of five hip-hop groups or artists, mm. what would be in your playlist? The groups or the songs? What would you... Answer it how you want. Oh, playlist. Uh, Damn, Okay. De La Soul mm-hmm. would have to be on this playlist. Public Enemy would have to be on this playlist. Uh, Rakim. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see, who else? Uh, EPMD. Yes, sir. KRS-One. Damn. So, yeah, and, and those are like a lot of lyricists, too. Yeah. And th- those are album guys. Yes. You know what I'm saying? The, definitively. You know, when you, when you heard a Public Enemy... Um, oh, man. album you knew it was a public enemy album despite yeah. the voices there was a sound to it there was a vibe to it and that's because they used one production team and that sort of inspired us you know mugs was the bomb squad all in one yeah hell and he, yeah and he, he was. was and he was very much I ins- said that. And, and he was very much inspired by them you know that's where the wild sounds come from and stuff like that on our first three albums where he's you know sampling his ass off you know how is mugs now he is working, man. Yeah. Salute to the, the to the black goat. He's got all kinds of stuff. He just uh, released a short film called Death Valley, um, and he's been working with all these amazing amazing artists as of late. And uh, we're we're about to be doing something pretty soon as and, Cyprus as Cyprus. And uh, one of my favorite things he hit me with, man, and he hit me with this out of out of nowhere because sometimes him and I will just be working on stuff on on the low key. He'll send me some stuff he thinks that I'll like, and then I'll send it back to him already done, and then we just, you know, bank it. 
if we use it later, we use it later. But it's something that's that's there if we want to go to Man, it. Man, Muggs is a beast. He's bro. a beast, and he sent me this one, and uh, I, I guess I, I was probably the first one on it because the you know when he first sent it to me, it was just a skeleton beat. So I get on it, and I put the chorus on it and everything, and then he sends it back with Ren on it. And I'm like, oh. I'm like, oh man, Ren. Okay, because I I had done something with Ren on 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 a Cypress album called Southland Killers way back. I didn't know he was gonna be on the record. Mugs pulled right. the magic, right? And so he sends me this with Ren, and Ren kills it, right? And I'm like, man, this is tight. I send it back, you know, hey, this is tight. This is what what are we using this for? He goes, oh, I'm gonna put this on my next album that's coming out in a couple months. Call Cube, see if you can get him on it. I'm like, well, that's a lot of pressure, but right. all right. Yeah. Like, hey, so, Cube, what's up, so, man? So I said it to Cube. I said, hey, um, because you know we're, we're we've been doing all these shows together, and we've been talking a lot. We we did some little work together. People haven't heard it yet, but oh, I heard it. it. Oh, you heard it? Yeah, ah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I heard it, bro. It's the beginning. Yeah, uh, man. So I tell him, hey, Mugs wants you to get on this joint right here, and uh, you know if you like it, jump on it. Let us know any. Hit it within a week. Send it back. Send it to Mugs. Mugs does Did the, the Mugs thing. Man, you know it's a checklist thing for me because I got to be on a saw with Ren and Cube, and it's hard. It's called Dump on Him, and uh, it's on Mugs' new joint, man. And it's it's also on his. Uh, Is that available now? Yeah. Oh, easy yeah. call. It's all. Uh, it's also oh, on his Lord. Death Valley. Uh, Say less. His Death Valley short film. I mean, it's all on YouTube. You know, we all release all these little yeah. shorts. On- <laughs> Hey man, let me ask you this, man. Um, we've been knowing each other for decades. Yes, sir. Decades. Why did you try to kill me? <laughs> <laughs> and you you set me up for like a slow kill, though. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what I did. I man, and we not just like radio homies. That hit you three days, huh? It's hitting me now. Oh, it's hit- <laughs> all right. Let Residuals. Me, let me tell you, man. Uh, for those who don't know, uh. I went into the smoke box with you. Yeah. Yeah. And it was one of them things like, big, you know, we know you don't smoke. And I was even like, yeah, man, I'll come through. And <laughs> for those that don't know, it's like you're sitting in a Cadillac and you blow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Windows up, you hot boxing everything, right? That's and right. you're doing an interview. I don't smoke. So what <laughs> they did is that they loaded the car up. You know what I'm saying? Of course, it's, it's B real. C minus is behind you, and I forget who is behind me. E zone, I think it was E zone. Okay, so now they're smoking, and we start off the interview. And I'm like, oh, okay, I can do this, you know. And then I start coughing, and I'm like, this dude really trying to do an interview, (laughs) and I'm fucking dying over here. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? I'm like, and so then I'm trying my best, and I'm dude B. I'm sitting here like. Are you saying the right words? And I'm telling you, bro. <laughs> you you did, though. <sighs> Be real. It was all the right words. No, nah, man. <laughs> Especially when I realized that I signed my house over to you. It was, it was, it, I'm going to tell you, man. It was bad for me. <laughs> it was bad for me in the car. Wow. And then when I got out the car, it was worse. And, you know, people was like, oh, man, you're going to sleep well. And, you know, I have a torn, rot- uh, torn yeah. rotator cuff. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You're and talking. so... I remember, dude, I could lift my arm up, but I think that I went from a happy zone, I went past it. You went to the anxiety zone. I was there, bro. Yeah. It was B. It was bad, bro. Uh, you know, like, we did this to Tony Hawk um, by accident. Rest in peace. Is he still with us? Yes, he's still with us. Okay, okay. I, did. I don't know, man. See, but I ain't we, seen him. See, with, see in the car, um, you know, the the smoke accumulates quickly, you know what I mean? Oh, I know. And yeah, yeah I know. As, as you know. And if you smoke, it it still will get to you. There's been people that have like decided, okay, we're most of the people that come in there, they smoke, and some of them can take it. Some of them are titans. They'll 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 deal with it. And others, yeah, they leave there definitely like I don't want to ever do. Oh this yeah, again. I know in my life now. You know what you proved to me? Unless I have something down the road and a. A doctor or a homeopathic doctor say, like, you got to smoke. I would never smoke in my life, B. And you taught me something that day. I got out that car, and it felt like my feet were, like, wet, like spongy. <laughs> we and baptized then, you. You sure in the hell did. Yeah. Did I ever show you the video of when I was driving? I never released the video <laughs> of when Jose was driving me home. 
And then when I got home to my wife, dude, I thought that I wasn't going to come out of it. I thought, like, man, what did I do to my career? <laughs> what did I do? Remember? I kept saying, you know what I'm saying? The anxieties you know were real, yeah. It was bad, man. I was in the car laughing. and cr- It was bad. It was the I worst. Feel, you know, I felt bad when that was happening to you. You know what no, I mean? I don't know. <laughs> I can tell how you're laughing now how bad you feel. And it's crazy because I remember when I was getting out, y'all started blocking. And I was like, what's going on? It was like, oh, we got another interview. And I'm looking at people. It was designer coming through. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, y'all about to do this shit again? Like, dude, I could do that. I couldn't even do that once a year, let alone twice in a day. <laughs> B, I was so Fucked up, man. And all the lies, if you're going to go home and go to sleep, mm. none of that shit. Was. <laughs> none of it, man. We talked about it. And I, and I even asked the neighbor. That's why they started laughing. I was like, dude, why did that man try to kill me? <laughs> what did you, I do? You know, I, I don't think you fell asleep because it's a contact. It's not necessarily like direct smoking. Like if you would have smoked, you would have went through all that. But you and would definitely die. gone to sleep. Oh, okay. <laughs> like the long one you talking about. I would have went to. I would have died. I don't know if it's the long one. You yeah, know, man. But, but yeah, you know, with contacts, for someone who doesn't smoke, yeah, it could give you the anxiety. Hey, dude, that, and I yeah, remember when you're in there with us like that. Yeah. And you can watch the video, dude. When you picked up another one, I was like, "You about to light another one?" <laughs> like I was in there, and at one point, I was just like. I started thinking to my mom, rest in peace, right? I was like, mom, should I just get out the car? <laughs> like, I like, do. And then I'm looking at Jose through the lens, and I'm like, Jose, I've known him for decades, right? I'm looking at Jose like, bro, get off of Be Real. Understand your homie dying. Look how I'm looking at you. <laughs> I was like a dog in there, bro. I was like, bust these Aww. fucking windows, See, you Jose. Know what I need? You know what? This, 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 I, need to, I, I need a tap button. You know, for folks, you know, that, that it's like getting too much. Yeah. Bang. Like Tap a safe out. word. A safe yeah, word, yeah. Man. I knew I should have too, man. But. Hey, you know, there's been a couple of people I had to let out. Like, cool Keith brought his manager, and his manager was like, hey, man, can I sit in the back while you guys do this? I'm like, well. But he knew you were B-Real, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> and he, he he was like, nah, man, I'll I, I be around smokers. I, you know, I'm cool. I, like, I could I could handle it. And, you know, Cool Keith was smoking a blunt, I believe, and I was smoking a big fat joint. And it was only two of us in there. Oh, Lord. And we get it, well, three of us, two of us smoking. And dude and, and the manager dude in, in the back. back. And it got just a little smoky. It wasn't even as bad as, as what it was for you. And he oh, yeah. had to, wow. like, run out of that car. He goes, hey, could you let me out? I said, oh, we don't do that. Right, right. <laughs> Like now we, but I, we, let, I let him out though. We like, man, you you fucking with the continuity and everything. I'm, I'm gonna have to address this on camera now yeah. that you had to get out the car. Yeah, we usually put that big old buzzer like that you would hear on Family Feud. Hey man, I, mean? I, I just left. felt like if I would have tapped out or got out, I don't know if it's peer pressure or whatever, but I felt like I would have let hip hop down. I was you like, man, did it though. Oh, because yeah. Because everybody, yeah. listen, everybody knows you, right? That, right. That all of us that know you know you don't smoke. So yeah, the man. fact that you went in there, people was gave stupid. you respect. Oh, for re- that. respect, respect. <laughs> My bad. I was going to say that was stupid as fuck, big. Like, you too grown. No, you old, man. No, what no, the they, fuck you doing in they, there? They respected that. Because yeah, man. They're like, you know, they, I think, AB, I was thinking about my kids and everything while I was in there. I was like, hey, dude. We had Noel G in there the same way. Like, he, you and him are the only two that. Didn't smoke, right? Because he had just um, quit smoking for something. I can't remember what he was talking about, but he was like, I'll, I'll, I want to be in the box, but I can't smoke if that's cool. We're like, all right, cool. We don't normally do that, but you're the homie. Right. We'll, we'll, we'll give you the pass. Cause, wow. Because I don't think he knew how crazy it gets in there with the smoke, man. right? And yeah, he, hey, felt that, he felt that too. I'm going to tell anybody, man, in the future, bro, <laughs> don't do it. I'm looking right in the camera too. <laughs> don't do it. If you I ain't wish, ready for Noel, it, Noel, yeah, I wish you, I wish you would have. Did he get in after me? He got in before you. Oh, okay, that's fucked up, Noel. You should have hit me <laughs> because now because it's like my job now, my duty to tell people don't get in there. And some people won't come do it. Nah, like, I can understand that. There's been a couple dudes. I was like this dude doing a real interview too. <laughs> th- there's been a couple dudes that wanted to get in there. Like, hey, I want to do the smoke box, cool. And then they showed up. And, you know, before they came in the building, they paced outside yeah. <laughs> like for about 45 minutes and then decided, you know what, I'm not hey, getting B, in the car. I was like, that was a bad decision. Like, I was really I like. Didn't, I didn't think it was bad. 
because you weren't me. <laughs> And you didn't make it home with me, man. I almost felt like you know on Friday when when uh, Smokey, not Smokey, when Chris when yeah. Chris Tucker is like by the pigeon coop. I felt fucked up that whole day, you know, bro. I love that you were giving me reports though. Yeah, that yeah, was because awesome. I'm alive. Because I was trying to you know walk you through some of it and whatnot, but you know obviously that didn't work. Yeah, man. Hey, dude, how old were you when you started smoking? Oh, I was probably like um, three. <laughs> Uh, you know, when I was created on this planet, uh, right. they gave me a program uh, with full tolerance. Yeah, so I believe that. At about five, no, uh, probably 13. Hey, right? man, I remember ball. we did this, like, this challenge where it was like, who's this, who's that? And we had Wiz Khalifa in and we had, you know, the faces. Yeah. And Wiz Khalifa, no matter what Wiz Khalifa <laughs> do, that motherfucker was like, it's be real, <laughs> and we and, and 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 it was like the elimination, man. It was like the what, what's that? The pack fours and all. Yeah. The, it got down, and it was like he was like, be real, yeah, <laughs> you know. And I'm talking about burner, Snoop, yeah, Wiz. They exhibit. we even threw a, a, yeah exhibit, and what's the Miley Cyrus? Mm-hmm. For some reason, yeah. they said she had lungs. <laughs> yeah, she got lungs, and Tell they me. were like, be real. Well, I'm just different. There you are, bro. Uh, you know, and you're a murderer. <laughs> I put I, listen, I put people yeah. to sleep. Yeah, you know, um, I, because I do all this stuff all around. You know what I mean? Like so, the the flower smoking with with the joints. Um, I used to smoke the bongs. I don't really smoke bongs that much anymore. I, I like smoking joints on on the the glass tips, the funky fill tips. But I'll do the edibles. I'll do the Damn. concentrates. All that Jesus stuff. Christ. It's all good for you. <laughs> and so yeah, that's what I feel. So, so I got a different, I got a different tolerance than most. And Wiz, have you smoked today? Yeah, of course. He was like, dude, right. he smells like it. Yeah, yeah. So this is my I- cologne. It's called in the pocket. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I remember that one time you had a suburban. You was like, yeah, I had to change the interior in yeah. here because the smell was holding in the car. Yeah. Yeah. He changed the interior. He I didn't say, ch- I need to stop smoking. <laughs> My man said, I'm going to change the, the interior. interior in this new car because it's holding. And yeah, I got to get, you know, like, I I get leather in I here. I try not to smoke in the car, but it's just, you know, it only lasts for maybe a couple of <laughs> days. Right. Like, have, ah. you ever, have you ever quit? Um, quit, no. But like there was a time when I was in Panama doing something um, down there. And I knew there wasn't any good weed down right. there. And plus, what I was doing was um, sort of on a spiritual thing down right. there with some, with some. Folks. You want to mix uh, high, 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 ayahuasca with uh, weed, right? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I didn't. I didn't do not. that. I haven't done that yet. Right. But, um, so I spent like a month down Whoa. there, and I didn't smoke anything. And when I got home. And the first joint I smoked, it felt like I was 13 again, man. Because, wow. you know, we smoked the heavy stuff, you know what I mean? So OG Kush was what we were smoking. And at, at that point, that was the heaviest. It's still one of the heaviest to this day. But so you you take a month off and you come back straight to that. Oh, yeah. Felt like Did you ever time. think about not going back to it? No. Oh, yeah. He was like, hey, that's a stupid question. People wouldn't be able to tolerate me, I think, if, 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 if I didn't smoke. Because, you know, I... <laughs> I'm less tolerable for for you know how can I say this without using the expletive mm. the it, the the bull ish you know what I'm saying right. I, I'm less tolerable of that uh, you know when you're not smoking when I'm not smoking like the other so I might I might ramp up real quick if I'm sober gotcha. but if I'm well, if, keep smoking it but if I'm if I'm smoking <laughs> I'll use my rationality before I react you know what I mean I'll think about it I'll analyze it whereas you know if I'm not smoking I might react off something way too fast hey man you guys you guys are like on people wish list to smoke (laughs) is there any celebrity that thought they wanted to smoke with you that smoked with you that couldn't hang well out of hip-hop that's probably most of them yeah um but i mean you know some of them folks came through the smoke box um and and actually hung but when they left oh yeah it was like uh doug benson for instance, uh, comedian Doug mm-hmm. Benson, right? Um, he was known for smoking and all that stuff. Yeah. And then he came and smoked out with us. And what happened was our bro E-Zone gave him some dabs before he got into the smoke box. And oh, then, Lord. you know, we're chiefing in the smoke box. And, you know, there's other guys in there smoking, right? Not just uh, me and, you know, 
person getting interviewed. So we're like boxing him out and he's dabbed up. So like, oh, yeah, he probably had he had he had one of those experiences. Hey, dude, I was really sitting in there. You said that was probably E zone behind me. Yeah. I was really sitting there like and, and with C minus. I was like, dude, what are y'all doing in the car? <laughs> y'all not asking no questions really. Like, get out the car and lighten some of this smoke up, man. Like, it was re it was ridiculous. You know, I think because normally they do ask questions. It's just that I think that E Zone was probably a little bit intimidated that like Big Boy was up in the front seat. Mm. And and because I know C minus did. And C minus, you know, he he he'll he'll ask the questions because yeah. you know he's been oh he's he, an he does what too. we do you yeah know? but he but he, even his questions he was like hey man you know yeah dude i was even getting i think and was, that's my guy i think he was surprised that you you would because when allow he was yourself like, to be yeah, in that car his question he was like man do you have your insurance card on you yeah. big and i was like yeah he was like who do we contact <laughs> you for wrote emergency? Out your family <laughs> trust yeah. yeah who do we contact for emergency so yeah. i was like all right i think he was just surprised that you were in there with us yes he yeah. knows you don't smoke i mean you know hey man you have been an advocate you guys have helped with laws you guys were you know known for smoking before it was like that popular thing to do, before it was like acceptable. Cause even then, years ago, right. people didn't admit. Even no. doctors were like, you know, now everybody smokes. Closet smokers. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So just where you see now, early days, man, where y'all kicked out of like hotels, oh. buses, oh, you yeah. know, like pulled over. Uh, asked to leave hotels yeah. or paid, you know, like there was a run. I had fines on every damn, cause my room is church. Right, right, right. You know I mean? so, Everybody congregate to <laughs> you. Congregate huh? with the doctor. Right. Reverend, Reverend Green Thumb <laughs> yeah. is in procession now. Uh, so, you know, I would get all the fines. You know what I mean? And then sometimes, it, you know, when they, they had a no-fine policy, it's like, excuse me, sir, we're going to have to ask you to leave, and I'd have to r run off to another hotel or whatever. You Did know? you have, ever have to sleep in the bus? <laughs> no. Okay, yeah, I'm just wondering, man. I, I mean, yes, in the early days, we definitely did. You know, but right. the bus drivers, you know, most of them know. And they, because, you know, this has been happening since before we came onto the scene. And but then, people party on their bus. And that bus driver has got to know, hey, record company or band is paying for this bus. All you're here to do is drive. Not right. to partake, not to judge, not to tell anybody got this it. or that. As long as they're not destroying the bus, you drive. Hey, man, I remember I know this one artist. They got on the bus, and when they got on the bus, their one of their guys started handing them back their guns. Yeah, and the bus driver was rolling and saw this. And he dropped refused, them off yeah. that sound check, and when they came out after sound check, all their luggage was right there by the uh, by the truck trucks. And has Cube ever told you that story? Uh -oh. oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah man, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know we like we used to travel like that too, but we would never break them out in front of the driver. Right, right. We'd always just have them like low key, you know, because when we were touring with Naughty in those beginning days, right, they were strapped up. We were like naked out there, and we were like, "Damn, y'all doing it like this?" He's like, "Yeah, some of these places we roll, they don't like, right? They don't like who we are, right? One hip hop, two we're brown and black. Yeah. You know what I mean? They ain't going to like us in some of these places, so we got to be ready. I was like, oh, man, I didn't even think about that. You're like, man, I left 45 guns at the house. So the, I know you had them. Hey, so the very next tour, you know, Send Dog was bringing something. Mugs was bringing, like, two, three things. I was bringing something. Of course, and, Mugs were bringing two or three. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? And so, yeah, our bus was strapped down for a minute, but we never let our driver know. And the most of the time, our driver was strapped, too, though. Yeah, oh, damn. Yeah, I guess like, it would have to be. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Amen. And the, the lifetime ban from Saturday Night Live. Yeah. We touched on this before. Yeah. That's still going on. Still going on. So when they said lifetime, they really meant they, they really meant lifetime. You right. Know? <laughs> <laughs> so for those that don't know, you they told y'all not to smoke. Yeah, they told us not to smoke. They kept telling uh, mugs not to smoke. Right. And uh, you know, we were gonna smoke. I don't know, you know, if they were just guessing that or whatever, but they felt the need to just keep hammering it home and that, you know, they, we were going to smoke at the end. You we were? were? Yes. Okay. We were going to smoke at the end, destroy our set, and then smoke at the end, like in the aftermath of all of our set being destroyed on the stage, we were going to, you know, pull out and smoke. But because they kept, you know, 
bothering him with this. He decided, I'm doing this right at the top in case they cut us. Maybe that was his mentality. Right. In case they cut our, our performance short and, you know, you don't get to see us do that. And then they kept telling him over and over. So then it gets yeah. to the point like, and, all right. Okay. And Muggs is not a dude that you tell something over and over right. to. He's like, I got it. And they they weren't buying it though because he's I don't think he was a good poker player. Oh yeah, that, yeah. Okay, his poker yeah, face right. like yeah, all right. that, yeah. Okay, Especially I'll, when he rolled his eyes up. Yeah, sure, right. we're not <laughs> yeah. gonna smoke nothing. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean. I, I think they knew, and he knew that they would they maybe edit that out, so he lit it off the top, and Damn. that became a thing. And I'll tell you what, for all the for the band that they have on us to this day, they run it in syndication mm. without edit. Wow. And with him saying, they told me I couldn't do this, and boom, they see him light up, and the rest. So, do they tell you you're banned for life, or you've just it, felt? It came after, yeah. They told us, oh, well, you've been banned from SNL for life. Damn. But you're in good company. Right, right. <laughs> Anybody like, else banned? Uh, uh, Eddie, no. Um, gosh, Willie there's Nelson? There's a comedian no. that's banned. Eddie Izzard, is it? Uh, uh, well, Sinead O'Connor, rest Sinead, in peace. Yeah. She was, uh, she oh, was yeah. banned. Okay. Rage Against the Machine. Was it SNL when she toured a picture of the yeah, Pope? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, S- Andrew Dice Clay. Andrew Dice Clay. Rage Against the Machine because they hung the yeah. flag upside down. Damn. Uh, Martin Lawrence. That's who I was thinking Martin of. Lawrence. Martin Lawrence's Lawrence band? Band? Yeah, I think they unbanned him, though. If I remember. Who are they banned him for? I don't know what they banned him. You know how crazy Martin Lawrence can be. Yeah. Um, yeah. Crazier than us. Right. Yeah. Yeah. About female hygiene, I think? Really? It says clearly uh, material launching into his monologue. I'm surprised like, you guys were able to still oh. survive after being banned for life from there. You know? I think How it, did y'all make it? it you wow. know, I don't know, man. Man. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. It's a blessing, though, because it's 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 uh, it's one of those things that people remember. Oh, yeah. And and we didn't get played out because of it. It actually added to the to our legend. Like, we, we would do something like that. You know what I mean? Because the first guy to blaze on TV was a dude named Reverend Bud Green on yeah. the Ricky Lake show or something like that. And we were on a way bigger platform. platform. Yeah. I just, you know, the, my only regret was that I, I wish that we all would have lit up. But it was cool that Muggs did it. You know I heard I mean? that. No, no one at the time is mad at him? No, no, no. Right. Not I think, in the group, I think, any I, I, management or anything. I would, I would imagine right. that that um, Sony yeah, was probably label. a little bit concerned, and I think he thought we were mad at him. And the, but the only thing we were mad at is that we didn't get y'all the lighter choice. Like, like, yeah. like, damn, you did it at the, at, at the top. Did y'all go to the SNL like how to do yeah. the rap party? Yeah, because oh, <laughs> yeah, because I mean we weren't banned yet. It, right, you know what I mean? Like they let the show happen. And everybody thought it was awesome. You know, no one, like Lauren Michaels didn't come up and say, what the f- was that? You know what I mean? Everybody loved it. They thought it was really cool. So we were hearing all this from all the comedians and all the writers and, and you know, the producers while we were- Y'all the, killed while, it. While we were in, in the, in, at the party that everybody goes to after SNL, right? So we're like, yeah, <laughs> two days later, you, well, yeah. you've been banned. Yeah, they That's let you get home network. first. Yeah, they let yeah, us they get let you get a, they, they let us have a good time. Yeah. But it's still, you know, they never took it down. Mm-hmm. They, they've never that's taken how upset it they that's how upset they were that's how upset yeah. they were because it was a good episode shannon doherty killed it in her appearance because mm-hmm. she was the host this night and we did our thing we brought something that no one had brought there See, with y'all that. brought legend to her too you yeah. know what i'm saying y'all brought legend to her we're hey right. man while i got you here uh i not that i want to put this to rest one more time <laughs> you know what i'm talking yeah, about I, I know the april fool's joke <laughs> yes that we did, that I still get people that come up. Because it was so good. Yes, man. I get people that come up all the time be like, man. That was like an Orson Welles were, moment. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, because we were, it was like theater of the mind. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And it was crazy because I still get people that say, man, you want to be real cool now. Yeah. I'm like, man, we've always been cool. <laughs> I, I still get it too. You know, like, so it, hey, it, what happened with you and Big? I'm like, It pops up on no Facebook one? and pops yeah. up. Like, it seems like somebody puts it up. At least twice a year. Because the audio acting was on point. Oh, you say so, huh? What yeah. happened to your finger, Playboy? This, this, this is us live. <laughs> right this here. was the trigger moment. Oh, wait, you know, if she looks like you, then maybe it was. <laughs> now, hey, man, let me on. set this up, man. <laughs> we went on. It was April Fool's Day, right? Yeah. And we went on and we set up, hey, man, this is what we're going to do. We're going to have this fight. 
would you gonna say this? And I remember I, I told you to say something. You was like, "No, nah, big, I'm it, not comfortable yeah, with it saying was, that." It was something about your mom. Yeah, and and and, and I don't even know if I would even say because mm. I didn't play with my mom back then. He, it was something probably. It was something. And it he was, was like, it, "No, it was, I'm not like, comfortable with that." I can't that. touch that. And, yeah. and then I asked you, "Do you, you got a sister?" And yeah. he says, "Yes." And I said, "Okay, that's gonna be the trigger point." Yeah, I'm and say so something. we literally <laughs> sitting outside the studio in an office talking about this April Fool's joke that we're gonna do. So we go inside and we're looking at each other as it goes on and Liz is in there yeah. and this is What it. happened to your finger, Playboy? Ask your little sister, man. See? <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, you know, if she looks like you, then maybe it was <laughs> Hey man, hold on. Did that hurt? Hey dude. I don't play when it comes to my family, See? B. Oh, man. Like, and I know no. we, no, nah, on the real, homie. I know we and joke around a lot, active. brother, but, but my fan band, that's totally off limits. Oh, come on. Don't get off feelers right now. Come <laughs> on, man. Hey, man, I'm not, <laughs> it's only me. I know, player, and that's why I'm going to ask you straight up, homie, on the real and on oh, air and off air. I don't play when it comes hey, to my man, family. But I'm believing this. Yeah. Hey, hey, it was. Because, you know, I haven't yeah. heard this audio. They just found it. Yeah. yeah. Because it, it sounds like an awkward moment. Yeah, it yeah. does, man. That's all good, dog. You been lifting lately? Hey, man. Your arms look a little stronger these hey, days. Hey, man. You just totally played yourself. Hey, dog. We throw a lot of jokes around I know, here, but man. I don't play when oh it comes to my God. family, homie. Hey, I, that's I all good. You, that. you know, oh. that's all good. All right. Well, I'm going to tell you that straight up. <laughs> I mean. And then listen to Liz. Yeah, yeah, you got to. Really? Man, I don't, I'm. Uh, hey, we play around, but I don't play when it comes to my family. Oh, my hey, gosh, dog. Man. If you don't want to play with me, don't play. You bring me in here every time. Yeah. To come have fun with you. Exactly. I'm having fun with you now. You want, you want to take it serious? Okay, hold on, homie. I ain't worried about Big two. Hey. You know what I'm saying? You better be playing. Hey, right hey, 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 you know who you're talking to. Hey, B, get up. Hold on. Hey, hey, what? What? You want to get up? No, you want to get up? Hey, no, 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 no. Trip this dog. Everybody comes in here. They got bodyguards. I'm by myself. What you want to do? Oh, my God. You don't play my family because I don't play that Hey, hey, cursing no, on no, air. No, no, what? fuck. Move out my way, fuck. All right, big fuck. Keep laughing. Hey, 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 I'm hey, not hey, playing. Hey, Listen to Liz. Hey, we play. Well, I'm not playing with you now. I'm in your mother. It sound worse than what I hey, thought. Hey, oh hey, that's why people believe it, bro. Fuzzy, oh, Fuzzy and Liz sold. Oh that. my god! So they were in on it too, right? Oh, yeah. Everybody, okay, okay. Jason, uh, Jason was oh, in on oh it. Like, we were, like, dude, now. <laughs> Hey, dude, but now I can hear, and you got to think, this is no social media. This yeah. is none of that. Now I can hear the, the how you said, the theater of the mind. Yeah. I can hear people listening to that. And we let all the cursing go over yeah, the air that and was everything. Key right there. That was the key oh, part. Oh, my God. Because that's bro. what made it sound real. And then when you got up off the mic. Yeah, and man. Started, and it was just was, in the room. Uh, like, yeah. Oh, my God, hey, bro. That was a classic hey, moment. I, I tell you, that was like this a similar thing to what Orson Welles did. You know, by scaring the hell out of people, right. that we were getting invaded yeah. by UFOs, right? <laughs> yeah, on our, man. on our, you know, in our hip hop culture, it was the equivalent of that because people yeah. thought we really had beef. There was people calling him, yes, right after we went off the air. People calling me, hey, you need me to come down there. Everybody hey, was literally there. on their way. <laughs> like he, and then when I went fast forward, you know, thirty years later, when I go look at the documentary and I see all your homies in there, I'm looking like, oh, this could have been bad. <laughs> so you never came back and like told people we yeah, came yeah. back but the shot around the world oh. is what people listen to yeah that first it was the first shot they heard yeah and then, man you know, and to this day people be like nah that was real y'all just cool and y'all try to say it y'all squ squashed yeah, yeah man yeah. like oh my god bro yeah, so we, i haven't heard that audio probably it's since good. that day it's good wow. yeah because it you know someone that didn't really know that it's, oh my god. they would totally think that i was can real. see why that was believable so yeah believable, bro. Man. you know what because we both took our voices in that range oh where you get mad at Dude. each other like oh, yeah, yeah. yeah it was it was, <laughs> it was, it was beautiful me, like, <laughs> it was beautiful acting too yeah i like when people was like you bring me here all the time to have fun yes, with you man. <laughs> yes man and liz in the background screaming oh yeah. it was perfect man. yeah that, that was the it perfect was perfect setup. man we should have got at least an emmy for that something, yeah, radio something, emmys or something. right because nobody's pulled one like that not at all bro not at all yeah. and listening back to that i was like okay now i understand <laughs> yeah. 
how people because you can't sit and be like, man, how do they believe that? I can see why they believed it. Because then it went, it cut yeah, Brock. It yeah. went straight into something. Uh, it just abruptly cur- cut off and we went, it, it was like somebody just pushed the button and oh it went into something. Like so it, it was like I a- know people had to be looking at their <laughs> stereos and their speakers like, oh my God. Oh my! If if social media was around then, oh yeah, can you imagine? We would have been able to pull that big dog back. Yeah, we would have had to like fight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine? It's gonna be a gang fight in the parking yeah, lot. Yeah, man. Oh, like, man. Me downstairs. I, we were both putting out the fire to our friends. It's like, oh, no, nah, man, God. this was just a joke. No, like, no, 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 no. Don't come down here. Dude, what are you like, tripping? Man, turn around. Turn around. <laughs> like, Jesus. This is Christ. the homie. Big, you good down <laughs> you there? You know what's like, funny yeah. is that we kept we kept going like because when 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 I left. Went on the air and he was saying something, and then I called back on the hotline. Oh yeah! <laughs> oh yeah! Because we didn't, I'm gone. we <laughs> didn't, we didn't let it go then. No. And I think that was probably like a Friday. And I think we came to clear it up on like Monday. Yeah, or we cleared up on Monday. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. We let it breathe for That's a couple That's that days. damn Jason being a producer. Yeah. It man. was awesome. That was one of the most awesome things. <laughs> yeah. Man. It was awesome. Nobody yeah, could man. top that. Yeah, it could have got me killed, but you know. It's the same here, yeah. y'all. I mean, you yeah. had homies too. Yeah, man. Oh, man. There it is, bro. Wow. Now, now watch. That's why I had to keep talking over this audio. Because somebody would have taken that mm-hmm. and uh, they would have yeah. been like, oh, this is, this, you know, it would have been 2023. This recent. They just, they yeah. just had this. Listen beat. to this. Oh, man. Be real. Obviously, over the years, you see your fans reciting every lyric from you guys all the time. Is there a song that we would be surprised that you know every single lyric that's obviously not your own? Oh, wow. That's a good question. There's probably several. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that like that ain't necessarily hip hop songs either. Oh, give me that one. Uh, damn, that's a good question. You hit me. It's a funny thing how that happens. You know it, but when someone <laughs> asks you, you totally forget <laughs> it. But uh, probably um, the Led Zeppelin song. Um, I think it's the immigrant song or what is it? what is it? Uh, the one they use in the Thor movie. Um, Oh, what song is that? Um, there it is. She's googling. Yeah, no, I I know a lot of Led Zeppelin songs. Immigrant song, yeah. Immigrant song, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Is that one of those songs where you pull up to and get valet your car and then like, what the hell are you listening to? <laughs> yeah, like it, it most especially bugs people out when you're dipping in your low low and you're rocking yeah, yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> All that's the light. And you're like, man. <laughs> Yeah, I think B-Real would listen to this, like something they were going to were going to sample. <laughs> you know, I think yeah, I yeah. think I heard something raw from them. You know, that's that's the funny thing about low riding is that you'll see everybody has a sort of different style. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I used to rock with Lifestyle Car Club. I'm honorary member at this point, but um like a lot of the guys who started the club, they didn't necessarily listen to oldies. They were listening to like Pink Floyd. And, yeah, yeah, that's crazy, know, right? Led Zeppelin, ACDC, and in their cars, when they roll up, they're most likely rolling that. You know what I mean? And some of the guys that come after them, they grew up off the oldies, and you know, you might hear them rolling up in that. And then the generation after that, they're rolling up with hip hop and whatever they're, you know, rolling out now. You know, trap style stuff. You know what I mean? Everybody's got a sort of a different flavor. Hey, B real, I want to uh, play something for you. All right. And just by ear, if you know what this is, let it be known. Uh, damn, that's. Let me hear. Is that a song I featured on? No, see, he don't know. <laughs> hey, man, I don't think this is as big as what I thought it was. I think so. I, yeah, think, I think Louis right. sold this to us the wrong way. Yeah, evidently, that's uh, Pornhub. Pornhub? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just their- yeah. I, I played so. this for so many people, and no one's got it yet. I knew he introduced it to me, and I'm like, I maybe that, they don't. I think that's the last thing anybody's paid attention to when they go to Pornhub. <laughs> oh, that is. <laughs> yeah. That could be it. That could be it, man. B- believe that. Hey, B, do you still have your Matter Daddy that from back in the days? With what? The whole, like the whole Matter Daddy. Do you still have that? Matter Daddy? Yeah. The hell is that? What do you mean? Matter Daddy? Yeah. Do you still have the Matter Daddy? <laughs> I don't know what that is. Matter, Daddy. Yeah. Y'all are looking at me it's crazy. Been years. Yeah, I can look it up. Matter, Daddy. You can't look it up because we he would know it. Mm. <laughs> you got me ba- on this one. On the Matter, Daddy? 
matter daddy? Yes. What is a matter daddy? Nothing. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Nothing's a <the> matter. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is a matter with me. Be real. Oh, yeah. yeah, all right. All right. I'm going to be ready for you on the yeah, next one. All right. <laughs> Believe that, man. But not be got- real. <laughs> Please, take it amongst your friends. You know what I'm saying? That's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Hey, listen, it's, you know, we, we used to do this to each other all the time. Yeah. And, and oh, I man. got Joe Grande the worst. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> what, do, what, what did you get Joe with? The tri tip. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, but he likes so he he likes tri tip though. Yeah. Do you do tri tip too? I don't know. Nah. <laughs> yeah, he was like, it, it was, remember I, Joe was the Joe was in. He was like, yeah, tri tip. I love tri tip. So try the tri- tip of my. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And then Joe was like, all right. <laughs> hey, so my setup was, hey, big. Um, <laughs> and I'm, I'm inviting hey, dude, everybody. I forgot I'm fucking with somebody that does this. So now, <laughs> I yeah, said, I said, hey, we got this smoke out jumping off. We got all these artists. I'm plugging the smoke out uh, festival, right? <laughs> I said we're gonna have barbecue there and everything. He says barbecue. Like, yeah, we're gonna have ribs, chicken, tri tip. You like tri tip? And he stops. He he, right. he realizes the setup. Joe Grande goes, All I in. love try tip I'm like, try the tip of my dick. <laughs> and you know, Joe, he's like, all right. <laughs> man. Oh, man. So real. this was oh, in the vein of that. Yeah, yeah man. And I'm glad and that you, you know started what? it back up. Bro, I forgot. Because I'm going to be ready for you on this. I forgot who I was messing with. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I'm probably going to have to cut that out. <laughs> yeah, because you know what I'm saying? Hey, what do they say? Let the sleeping dog? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got you to gotta do that. That was a great setup. Man, I love thank you for you, that. Brother. I love awesome. you always, man. I love you, period, Be Real. And thank you for coming into the neighborhood, man. Thanks for having me as man, always, man. You it is a pleasure, bro. And I'm telling you, man, I'm a fan first, been a fan for years, peer as well, man, friend as well. And I love to see what you're doing, man. And keep inspiring us, bro. And as we celebrate also 50 years of hip hop, how can we celebrate without having you in the neighborhood as well, bro? Thank you, bro. And thank you for the many contributions that you have made to, to not just hip hop, but and not just the genre, but changing people's lives. You know what I'm saying? And I'm telling you, I've had some of the greatest times with you. And now I have a, a horrible time with you as well. <laughs> when I got into uh, the smoke box and almost died in there. Other than that, and it's crazy, man, because you had all these great deposits. Then that one withdrawal came and it almost closed your account out with you. You know, but 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 oh, I love man. you. And God knows I would I could be walking in Phoenix, Arizona. It could be 128 degrees and you can pull over with air coming out of the window and be like, Big, you need a ride. I am not getting in your car. <laughs> All righty. Be real in oh, the neighborhood, man. ladies and gentlemen. Thank you once again, my Thank brother. Thank you, sir. There it is. And much love to you and everybody here. All the time. Drop. Drop.